Got any questions for me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ken, you know, you've talked a little bit about your, you know, your roster, your defense, your goalies. There's obviously some competition at the, at the bottom end of your forward group right now, but are you, I don't know if calm or relax is, is the proper term, but kind of going into the season, there's not a lot of questions surrounding your team. Is that fair? Uh, I think we've, you know, I guess, Jason, we had a good regular season last year. You know, you, you got to do it all over again. You know, that's sort of, you know, you're starting, today we're starting 32 teams have the hopes and aspirations to, uh, you know, make the playoffs. So I'm always nervous. I have great respect for how hard it is to, to make the playoffs. So I think as we come in, do, do we know that, uh, you know, if we just started with 21, do we know 18 or 19 players are going to be on the roster to open the season? Absolutely. Um, we've got a few things we've got to sort out. And then obviously we've got to, we've got to, play as a team at a high level starting on opening night. What's your expectation for Dylan Holloway this year? Uh, I'd like to think that he's going to uh, be on the team and then, um, you know, I would expect he's going to be on the bottom part of the roster. And, you know, I, I guess when I look at the bottom part of the roster, they don't get power play time. It's it's. It's a hard lead to get 10 or 15 goals if, if you don't play on the power play and you don't play 15, 16, 17 minutes. So if you play 10 minutes and you don't play on the power play, um, be a plus player. You know, if you can get sing, uh, double digit goals, and I, I'm, it's not only Dylan Holloway, it's, it's everybody down there. I think that was one of the things that, that I was pleased with our team last year that we had a lot of players in the bottom part of the roster that, that played those 10 minutes, didn't play in the power play, and pitched in with, t with 10 goals. So um, look, we're looking for, for players that can contribute like that. Might be as much a question for, yeah. for Jay, but, but you're here yeah. today. When you think about your goaltending, how much does last season factor into you know, that, that start on opening night? Is, is it an open competition between these two to grab that net opening night and to grab that starting job this year? Well, I mean, I, I mean, obviously when we finished, I think, what, it's two play, 28 of the last 32. Um, you know, now he's, so I think coming into training camp, obviously, based upon the way you finished, he's he's probably got the, the leg up. But the reality is, you know, I don't really, you know, who's in that on opening night? We're going to need both guys over 82 games. Um, you know, I, I would think at the end of the year, one guy plays 50, one guy plays 30 or 45, and 35 will play that. As we go, um, we're going to need both guys. Uh, it's really a two-goalie league. Uh, you know who plays opening night. You know for the first two. I don't. I, I. I don't know. For me, it doesn't matter. I think from a fan's perspective, you know, they, they read into it. You know, who's the opening day pitcher? Who's the opening day goalie? And he's number. Things change so much over the course of six months and 82 games. Then you factor in injuries. Um, I, I, I'm confident that we're going to have a good one-two punch. Um, obviously, Stu had a great year last year, um, finalist for the Calder Trophy. I thought that you know Jack had a really good finish uh, coming in relief in the in the in the playoffs. I thought that Jack played. I think he won nine in a row in February when when Stu went, had his his wife had the baby. Um, Probably with Jack, it was the consistency. He needs to, we obviously would like him to be a little more consistent, but he, when, he was, when he was playing at a high level, he, he played at a high level and we won. So uh, um, I think for Jack's case, being in the second year of a five-year deal coming in, knowing the city, you know, you come in on a, on, a, on a big contract. I think all those things, in a lot of cases, um, the first year is a tough year, so I'm hoping that... Uh, Jack is 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 uh, going to come in and and play his best hockey. We're going to have a good uh, good one two punch in net. Assuming everybody stays healthy on the blue line, do you envision enough nights of eleven and seven where you can have Broberg in the lineup and Darna or like where Philip Broberg is concerned? Is there enough opportunity for him to to grab that ice time? And if he's not. Is he a player that you're okay having as a sometimes in, sometimes out guy? I hope not, but we're going to have injuries. <laughs> you know, over 82 games, to think we're going with the same 12 forwards and they're just going to be in there every night or vice versa, the same six defensemen, 
uh, I hope it happens, but I think the reality is you need depth. So I said to these guys, you know, today in, in the meeting, you know, if, if, if you're a player coming into camp and you don't quite see yourself on the team, um, whether you're in, 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 in Bakersfield, you need to have a good camp because the reality is over the course of 82 games, we're probably going to play 15, 16 forwards and we're probably going to play 8, 9, 10 D. That's just, I think you got to plan on that. Now, you know, because we're tight on the cap, obviously we're going to have to have the odd game during the year when we play undermanned for a game and then and then we can fill by the, by the, by the rules. You're going to need you know, need depth. So, Phillips going to get a chance to play, Dylan Holloway's going to get a chance to play. We're going to play lots of these players um, you know that, that spent time in the American League last year in preseason and again whether they whether if they don't make the team, they need to to show us that they're close because you're going to need you're going to need depth. So I think there's going to be lots of opportunity. You know, you think about last year, we ended up sending down um, Janmark at the start of the season. He turned out to be a really important. I think he played 14 or 15. He played played a lot of minutes in Game One of the playoffs against LA, and then broke his foot, and he was a big loss. So things change over the course of 82 games. You need lots of depth. Lots of these players are going to get lots of opportunity, and then it's up to them to take advantage of that opportunity. You have uh, Nurse, uh, Matias, and Kulak all on the left side. Any hesitation at all? Uh, Broberg's got pretty good analytics on the right side, despite being a left shot. Any hesitation looking at him there? Well, I think Phil can play left or right. So, um, you know, here in the early going, um, Ekholm's got a, a hip flexor. He probably won't be uh, on the ice for the first little bit uh, of training camp. So I, I, early on, Phillips going to be practicing every day, playing left. And then I would think, I, I would think Broberg. You know, I've, and I've talked to Jay. We play eight preseason games. I don't know if anyone's going to play six, seven, or eight. But I would think that Broberg, Holloway, um, and three or four others in that group would probably play, you know, five games. And and then and then we got to make some decisions as we. Uh, Put our team together. Okay, on the record now, you've got three guys in on the PTO. I know you've been, you're, I mean, Sutter in a perfect world checks off a lot of boxes. Just a thought on, you know, sort of the scenarios for uh, Sutter, Gagne, and Ernie. Well, I'm going to tell you what I told those players and I told their agents. We're, we're trying to win. We're in this window of trying to win. We're trying to put the best team we're on the ice. Yeah. You know, we're not going to put somebody on the ice because they got potential. The, the, the potential is going to go to the American Hockey League. You've, you've, got, to, you've got to play. So um, if they can come in and it looks like they can contribute um, and help make us better, then we're going to figure out a way to make it, to make it all work. Now, obviously, we've got to make some decisions here in three, over the course of three weeks. Um, but we're, 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 we're trying to put the best team that we can on an every night basis. Hey, Ken, just a bit of a fault to Bob. Over yep. to you right here. Uh, yeah. Adam Ernie, what, what do you like about him? What opportunity do you see for him here? Well, I like that he's, you know, I like that he's big. I thought, you know, when you look at our, obviously we lost some size over the course of the summer, you know, uh, you know, had to trade cost because of money. Bukestad obviously went back to Arizona. Those are two big forwards. Um, I like that he, he, he saw, you, you know, you like to have some some size on your, on your team. He's got, you know, he's 28 years old. I like his age. Uh, he was, um, you know, I talked to Jeff Blaschel about him. I've talked to Pat Verbeek about him. Obviously, Pat Verbeek was with him in, uh, in, in, in Detroit and in Tampa Bay. Blash coached him in, uh, in Detroit. Uh, he's a, he's a great, he's a great person. Um, very well respected in the locker room. He's, he's 28 years of age. Um, he's been around the league a lot. Uh, he can play on the bottom part of the roster. If he gets some injuries, I think he can go up. He can play in the top part of the roster. I think he was Detroit's leading scorer or goal scorer in the uh, in the um, during the pandemic. And those that 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 they had their own little division. So I think all those things are reasons why he obviously was looking for a, a contract. Couldn't get a contract. He wants to win. He's been in a winning organization, you know, in Tampa Bay. Um, I like that, you know, I respect Steve Eiserman. Steve was the manager in Tampa Bay. When Steve went from Tampa to Detroit, he traded for him and brought him with him. So, you know, you, you, you go one thing after the other, and, and ultimately it's a PTO. He can come in, and, and uh, he knows that we're trying to win, and uh, he knows that we're, we, we've lost some big people, some big forwards over the course of the summer, so he's coming in here trying to earn a job. 
Ken right here. Yep. Uh, Jack Campbell just sat up there and was fairly candid about how uh, he said, you know, I blame myself for every goal that goes in. And he said it kind of caught up to me last year. Uh, I had to do some work this summer to, uh, you know, try to change that mindset a little bit. You're an old goalie. Uh, does, do you look at Jack Campbell and, and think that maybe he has to figure out how not to wear it and how to blame himself for every goal that goes in? The answer would be yes, uh, but it's for all these athletes, right? It's it's for every athlete in there to try to sort out um, when you know where you take responsibility, how much responsibility you take, and obviously being in goal, you know, when you when when one goes in, the big red light goes on, and, and there's a lot of action. You know, fans are either screaming, and so you know, if you make a mistake up front a red light doesn't go on. If you make a mistake in defense, not all the time a light goes on. So, you know, I think that, you know, what's Jack, 30-ish? You know, he's been around the league. He's a competitor. Um, he He's very demanding of himself. But certainly I think that, you know, to, for me as a goalie, you know, you can say, hey, I should have had that one. Uh, I, I got to be better. And, and you and you move on. Maybe at, at, maybe at times he takes a little bit too much responsibility. But I know that... Uh, um, I'd rather have that than the guy that doesn't take any responsibility. So, you know, I, I, I think at the end of the day, um, I guess, like I said here to Darren, he, he played at a high level f for, for parts of the season. It probably was, you know, the consistency. And I know that uh, I, I think he feels he's had a great summer. Um, he's done a lot of things, and I, I, I know he's excited to, uh, to be to be here now with another opportunity. Uh, Brandon Sutter. Yes. I don't know if he's even done his medical yet, but what are your, you know, how close is today's Brandon Sutter to the Brandon Sutter we watched, you know, be a pretty effective depth center two years ago, three years ago, four years ago? Well, I'm going to tell you what I told Brandon a, a few days after we signed him to a PTO. I called him and I said, Brandon, um, you know, you're 34 years of age. You haven't played hockey for two years. You had long COVID. Um, you don't really know where your game's at. We don't really know where your game's at. But if you're anywhere close to where you were when you were 28 or 29, you're exactly what we need. You're a right shot centerman. You can win draws. He's defensive minded. He's a big guy. He can pitch in with some offense. Um, he needs. We we need to see where his game. He and you know talking to the coaches, uh, he's looked good. Um, you know, the last two weeks, but you got to get the preseason games. You got to be bumping and grinding and, and, and all those things where, where the intensity next week goes up a little bit more um, over last week. And then the set, as, as you start to get to the second, the last three, four preseason games, when you're starting to get 16 out of 20 players are on an NHL roster, it goes up again. We got to watch him here over the next three weeks and then we'll make a decision. But if he's anywhere close to where he was when he was in his prime, He's exactly what uh, what we're looking for. Hi, Ken. Uh, just an off-ice question for you. There's been a lot of speculation about uh, Steve Steos and his future. Um, uh, can you update us on, on where he is and what his role is with the team? Um, Steve is not here. Um, I, I know he's had some things going on in his, his family. Um, I've talk, I haven't talked to Steve in probably a month. So obviously Jeff came in, Jeff Jackson came in. Um, we'll see where it is, but for, for now, he's obviously, he's an oiler. Um, I've, uh, I plan to talk to him here this week and see where, where he's at. Obviously you've talked a lot about, uh, being the GM of this team with, with Connor and Leon and, and that being a huge advantage for you and, and, and all that. What do you think is next for them? I mean, Connor had 153 points or whatever it was last year. Is there any way you think he can get better? I mean, being around Connor, he's, he's the most driven athlete that I've ever been around, uh, focused and driven. So uh, I'm sure he found some things this summer that he, he's pushing himself to get better at. Um, and, you know, and Leon, too. I mean, they're, they're two of the greatest players in the world, you know, maybe in the history of the game. Um, we're all lucky to to watch them every day. They're incredibly driven, individually driven. They're individual, they're, they're team driven. Obviously, they, we want to win the Stanley Cup, but 
I'm not going to say 32 teams, but there's lots of teams out there saying the same, the same thing. So um, they're driven for team success. They're driven for individual success. They're great leaders. They're great role models. Um, you know, obviously Connor brought in everybody here, or called everybody this summer, not only his teammates here, but called players in the American Hockey League and got everybody here two weeks early. Um, they... Leon bought a house in uh, in Toronto so he can be close to Connor. They can work out all summer. I mean, I'm, I'm laying a picture of two driven driven athletes that that are in the primes of their career um, and drive themselves individually, and they drive they drive the team. We're we're, we're fortunate to have them. Ken, just over here, um, you're an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. I just wanted to ask you about how important it is for you to finish this thing, finish what you started. And what's his status on that? Are you, do you hope to negotiate to, for an extension, or, or are you not going to worry about it till kind of the end of the year? Well, I'm not worried about me. So uh, I would say to you that, um, you know, you know my focus. I want to win the Stanley Cup. I mean, it, 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 everybody in that room wants to win it. That's, that's my focus. You know, I've, I've been fortunate to have been part of four teams that won a Stanley Cup. Um, there's nothing like it for the city, um, for the players, for the organization. Um, that's that's my focus. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'll worry about me near the end of the at the end of the year. Uh, everybody knows how old I am. I'm, like I, I had the green banana joke, you know, here last year in in, in May. So um, I'm focused on every day trying to figure out how we can make our team uh, the best that it can be, and then. Everything else takes care of itself, and I'll worry about that down the road. But for, I'm thrilled to be here. I got a lot of juice. I got a lot of energy. I'm very motivated. Um, I'm excited to work with Jeff Jackson. We got great ownership. We got a, a passionate fan base. Um, I think we've got a really good team, and I'm really excited for, for this season. Uh, Ken, on another topic, and I know this wasn't your organization, but you obviously have known Mike Babcock for a long time. But what happened in Columbus over the last week or so? I don't know if you have a thought on it or want to comment on it, but I, I thought I'd put that out there for you. I, I mean, I just know, I haven't really talked to anybody. Um, I just know what the media is saying. I guess I, my one word would be I'm, I'm disappointed for everybody. You know, I'm disappointed for Mike. I'm disappointed for the organization. I'm disappointed. You know, obviously, I, Mike and I worked together for 10 years, and his wife and my wife were, were, were good friends when we were together. And then when you leave, you kind of go your separate ways. So I, I, I see Mike, you know, when I see him, I, I'm, I'm excited to not... I, 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 we had a great relationship, so I'm, I'm just I'm just disappointed. I don't really... Again, I, I know what the media is writing, but I don't know a lot more than that. I'm just... Uh, it, it's... I'm disappointed for Mike. I'm disappointed for the for everybody there.